Concubines and harems have a long-standing place in Chinese history. But did you know that there are several Chinese emperors that had male concubines in addition to women? One of these emperors was the widely popular Emperor Qianlong of the Qing Dynasty. Late in his long life, he took one of his corrupt advisors to bed. Welcome to Crazy Histories, where we bring you the craziest and weirdest facts from human history. Some of the things discussed in this video may be offensive or disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Who was Emperor Qianlong? So who was this famous emperor that took on a male lover along with his female concubines? Emperor Qianlong was the fourth emperor in the Qing Dynasty, or Manchu Dynasty. He was born in 1711 and began his more than 60-year reign in 1735. Qianlong was named as his father's heir very early into his father's reign. This was a little bit of a contentious appointment, as he was the fourth-born son. However, by the time it came for him to rule, he was the oldest surviving male. Although he had a male favorite, it's clear that Emperor Qianlong was not gay. By all accounts, he was very much loved by his first wife, and the two had a son together. In addition to this son, he had at least 27 children between his many concubines. It was under Qianlong's rule that China reached its largest size, and it was during this time that there was massive population growth. However, these great achievements are often overshadowed by the fact that he gave so much power to corrupt advisors later in his life. One of these officials worked his way up through the palace from an imperial bodyguard and eventually held titles such as the Vice President of the Ministry of Revenue, Grand Counselor, and Minister of the Imperial Household Department. This man was called Heshen. Who was Heshen? Heshen was born in July of 1750 and was a mere 25 years old when he began working at the Imperial Palace as a bodyguard to Qianlong. Within a year of starting this job, he'd made quite the impression on the emperor. It's believed by many that Qianlong thought that Heshen resembled one of Qianlong's favorite concubines that died. Others say that Qianlong found the man to be quite attractive, and that's why he gave him the impressive positions. Maybe the emperor was just impressed with the man's work and wanted someone with that type of work ethic in an advisory role. Whatever the reason, Heshem was promoted quickly from one position to another until he held one of the most powerful and coveted positions in the empire. He was in charge of managing both the household affairs and the budget for the entire empire. In addition to the quick and impressive promotions, Qianlong arranged for his youngest and favorite daughter to be married to Heshen's son. This tied the two families together in a way that most of the other advisors did not get and were jealous of. Because he was the emperor's favorite, Heshem was given quite a lot of leeway with his position, and so was able to get away with things that most other officials couldn't and that they did not agree with. Since he was in charge of the household's and empire's finances, he could move money around as he saw fit. This often meant moving money out of public projects and into his own pockets. Between his legal and corrupt earnings, it's estimated that at one point he was worth roughly $270 billion in today's money. Naturally, Qianlong's son and successor didn't like that this advisor was stealing from the crown and from the nation and had Heshen put to death. In addition to the theft itself, he didn't like the embarrassment of seeing someone his father publicly cared about and trusted stealing from him. Heshen, the male concubine. Historians debate if Qianlong actually took Heshen as his lover or not. However, there's no reason to believe that he didn't. There's a lot of proof that the two were very much closer than Qianlong was to any of his other advisors, and that Heshen stayed in Qianlong's chambers on occasion. Another debated topic is, if they're lovers, how the relationship got started. There are a few different versions that historians have suggested. The most romantic version is this. Before Qianlong was the emperor, he was a boy in his father's palace. One day, he was walking through the gardens when he spotted one of his father's concubines. She was the most beautiful woman he'd ever seen, and he had to have her for himself. Once his father learned about this, he ordered that the concubine be put to death for sleeping with someone other than himself, something concubines were never supposed to do. When Qianlong found out that she was set to die because of him, he felt sorry for her. Before she was killed, he touched her neck with a cinnabar and told her that they would meet again in 20 years. 
When Kian Long saw He Shen, he was immediately drawn to the young man because of his close resemblance to the woman. After he looked more closely at the man, Kian Long saw that He Shen had a red birthmark on his neck in the same place that Kian Long marked the concubine, and that He Shen's age was right in line to be the reincarnation of his former love. As romantic as that story may sound, it is most likely not true. In reality, Kian Long was probably just attracted to a very talented young man. Heshen was fluent in four languages and was good at his job, even though he was corrupt. Heshen also wrote poems for the emperor and was artistic. This would have only drawn the emperor to the man even more. Even without being the emperor's lover, Heshem would have had a comfortable life in the palace. However, because of his relationship with Qian Long, Heshem had access to his private chambers and experienced even more luxury than you or I could ever imagine. His position, regardless of how he got it, also garnered respect from nearly everyone in the palace. It was a prestigious job that was reserved for some of the smartest men in the empire. The other advisors may not have liked him, but they had to respect his position as the Minister of Finance and the fact that he was good at the job. The fact that Heshen was the Emperor's favorite also earned him respect. In addition to the money that he earned and that he squirreled away from the Empire, Heshen also received many lavish and extravagant gifts from Qian Long. Some historians have even argued that all of his wealth came from those gifts from the Emperor, and that there were no corrupt actions at all. This probably isn't true, though, just based on how much money Heshen was said to have. It's possible, though, that a significant amount of the wealth came from Qian Long, and that there were far fewer corrupt acts than history says there were. Heshen's End and Legacy Unfortunately for Heshen, Emperor Qian Long was the only person in the palace that actually liked him. Whether he was corrupt and the other officials were tired of him, or that they were just jealous of his close relationship with Qian Long, the result was the same. After Qian Long died, Heshen was put on trial for his actions. Of course, he was found guilty and was given a death sentence where he was ordered to kill himself. The accounts vary on how he was supposed to kill himself, but all agreed that this was his punishment. Today, when Heshen is remembered, it's not for his love affair with Qian Long as he probably would have preferred. Instead, those other advisors got their way and he's remembered for his corruption. For more than 200 years, Heshen has been an instantly recognizable character in Chinese media. He's always portrayed as a villain and is often shown in a mocking light. What do you think? Is that level of wealth in life worth being remembered as a terrible person for after you're gone? If you like this type of video, be sure to subscribe and click to get notifications for more crazy history.